I don't really know. I, we didn't have, so we didn't have like titles. We were just doing the work, right? And so I don't really know how we would be categorized. Uh, I will say that the lead architect or founder, if you will, was Demetrius um, because I think without his pushing and organizing, it wouldn't have happened the way it did. My name is Demetrius Jaggers. I uh, currently uh, am the senior director of the Dowdy Multicultural Center at Westchester University. I actually had the, the amazing uh, opportunity to uh, start men uh, at Kent State University. It was a result of some research that I, I wanted to do, pursue uh, specifically looking at the experiences of Black and Latino men at Kent State University. So I'm a two-time Kent State alum. I went to Kent for my undergrad. I was there from 2005 to 2008 for undergrad and then from 2009 to 2010 for my master's. I traveled to Columbus to do this internship that was focused on state government and politics. And while I was in Columbus, I, I was able to get connected to Ohio State. Uh, and at Ohio State, they have the Ty Anthony Bell Resource Center on the African-American male. And at the time that I was uh, in Columbus, because of the connection of the program, we were able to get access to uh, Ohio State libraries and other resources on campus. And so I actually attended several events at the uh, Bell Resource Center in, at, at Ohio State. And really, after participating in, in that during my time in Columbus, that was really the impetus for the research project and, and then what ultimately led to the creation of men. As I was preparing to, to come back, I uh, one day I was actually, I went to work out and uh, I was thinking about all that I had experienced in this program. Uh, I was invited, I don't even remember how I got invited, but I was invited to the governor's mansion to observe this panel between, there was a group of black men who were in college and then another group of black uh, young boys who were high school students. And at that time, the, the governor was working on this statewide initiative to close the achievement gap. And so I'm sitting in a, the governor's mansion and you can name, you know, senators, state reps, lobbyists, and uh, having this conversation. And it was at that moment that I, re I really began to think more intentionally about my experience as a black man, uh, attended a predominantly white institution, and what that meant, uh, being a first gen student, being low low income. And I uh, left that experience really with the kind of a, a, a weight, so to, so to speak, is thinking, you know, what is my role in, you know, kind of shifting the dynamics of a community that I cared about at that time was Kent State. Like up until that point, I had really thought a lot about my own success in terms of getting the degree, graduating and being successful. At that point, I really began to think more internally about what is my role to kind of lay lay the path work for the next generation. And so when I returned to campus, I remember writing that email. I sent the email to the president at the time, which was uh, Lester Lefton. And I explained to him about my internship experience. I, I talked to him about my uh, in, involvement and, and what I have witnessed at the Todd Bell Resource Center, and I said, we need something like this at Kent State. You know, that was that was my kind of takeaway, and I and, and I wanted to see what we could do for, as an institution to to make that happen. And so that email was kind of the the, the starting point of men. When I initially sent that email, <clears throat> I really didn't have a a lot of I didn't have a sense of like what it would take to achieve uh what i want to achieve but i i got a response back from the president um and you know he he encouraged me to talk to a couple of different people who were there at the institution uh and and to be quite quite honest 
you know, some of those conversations weren't that helpful. The one thing that I did walk away from the conversations with was that I, we needed uh, like some empirical evidence that th this was something that was needed at um, Kent State. Like we needed to provide proof that, you know, black men or Latino men could benefit from an initiative like this. And so my first thought was, you know, hey, let's do some research. That happened uh, kind of this, this fall of uh, 20, 2009, and we conducted interviews through the fall and interview. We ended up interviewing 26 black men, black and Latino men. Um, and from that point, you know, we started analyzing data and we, we worked with uh, <clears throat> the Student Multicultural Center, uh, Shauna Lee at the time. Uh, I think that the, the center was doing a soup and substance series where, you know, people could come in and, and share research or share uh, other uh, knowledge and information. And so what we did, we presented the findings of this research study to um, a group of faculty administrators on campus. Um, and, and because of the support of, at that time, it was uh, Greg uh, Jarvey uh, and um, Resident Services and uh, a couple other departments on campus who helped to support the research by providing incentives and helping helping to pay for food for participants. So that was really helpful. And so we once we presented that research, um, the, the next step was kind of like, okay, what do we do now? And so it was over that summer, summer of 20. So we presented the research in spring uh, 2010. And then over that summer is uh, when I, you know, reached out to um, NJ Akbar, uh, Richard Serpy, uh, Dave Garcia was there at the time, Kimberly Edge, Ricardo Newell was involved initially. Um, and we started meeting over the summer to develop the framework for men. So what we wanted to do, uh, and we started meeting in, I think it was spring of 2009, but maybe it was fall. I, yeah, it was fall, fall 2009. That's, it's crazy that this has gone by so fast. Um, to meet to talk about starting the Male Empowerment Network. A lot of it was about providing students support and Demetrius Jaggers did a research project um, showcasing what the need was and black men talking about um, and Latinx men talking about uh, the support they wish they would have had while at Kent State. So that is um, why we started it and how it started. The university looked totally different than what it does now. The support we have for students and staff members, totally different. Uh, we have much more now. Um, and the Male Empowerment Network was one of those programs that the university desperately needed. When we continued to, to progress with men, um, 2010, 2011, 2012, we were seeing just enormous growth uh, when it came to retention and graduation with the gentlemen that were a part of the program. Uh, at one point, we had like a 93% graduate uh, retention rate with the gentlemen in uh, the Male Power Network, which was about 40 um, students. And everyone who were a part of men that, sem that year also graduated that were set to graduate. And so then that following year, we had, I think, an 86% black male um, retention rate, which never happened. That showed what we could do, you know? And a lot of that work happened because of, you know, we worked with 50 and 60 gentlemen. Why it's important is because it, it helps students find their purpose, help them find their, their tribe, find the, their people. Uh, and if you feel like you have the support, uh, you feel like you belong, uh, you can do wonders in this environment. We, we have to be realistic and know that we are at a predominantly white institution and we are outnumbered and we come here 
Uh, if you're lucky enough to go through uh, Capita, you're coming here with uh, a lot of support and family. And then everyone goes in their corners and you don't see them that much, um, potentially. And so can we build systems to counter the systems that exist that may not be providing the best support? And that's why men is important. It provides that system and that structure of support for students. And when we were able to prove what we could do with it, um, providing that outline for the Division of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion, which I was not a member of at the time, uh, and why it was valuable, they, they took it on. Um, prior to that, no one wanted to take it on as a actual program, as a part of any unit. And so we did it just out of the kindness and love of our, our hearts, but we didn't get paid for it. It was, not, it was not a part of our job description, but we felt it was important. And uh, Dr. Brown, um, Dana, and Dr. Dr. Lawless Endrick, um, and Dr. Pringle were really big in trying to make sure that we were able to do a su successful transition to an institutionalized program. You know, I didn't want the program to fizzle away because it's about a personality. I wanted it to be about the students and what they wanted and that my role was to help facilitate their wants. And so we started you know, having leadership roles. Braylon Hudson and uh, Stephen Parrish were the first leaders. Whatever year they did it, they graduated that year. So whatever year they graduated, they'll be able to tell you what year that was. It was something that we were invited to participate in. Um, and when it was brought to us um, by our mentor, and still uh, my mentor and, and a lot of us, NJ Ogbar, um, he presented it as just a way for us to, you know, sort of conquer the difficulties and the struggles we were we were dealing with as young, you know, young men. As we started to grow and started to see more consistency um, and realize that, hey, this is something that we need to actually make sure that we're taking care of so that it doesn't die out. Um, uh, NJ Akbar was, was a pivotal player in, in getting us organized and um, I think his his selection of, you know, it was a very careful and hand-selected group of leaders that he picked initially um, because we all carry different a different set of strengths. That's really how I think starting to have some student leadership into it is really what helped propel men to the next level. And then it became really about the students. and they began to drive the content of each meetings and um, from driving the content to leading group discussions and basically pushing me further and further from the center of the room and to the back of the room and just be able to watch and take in what was happening. That was to me the be most beautiful part of the program. I really see men the same way I've always seen it as the potential of being the perennial uh, male support program, not only at Kent State, but um, at institutions like our, our size and that are like us. And so being able to, to say that we have a program that not only is invested upon um, by the staff, but uh, heavily invested um, by the students and they run a highly sophisticated empowerment program that supports one another and really is like that 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 chain where they're strengthening each link as they go on and they get to the graduation stage but they're pulling the next link with them and if everyone continues to pull their link across that finish line that everyone makes it and I, I think that that is what I see this program being able to do um, and have done in some ways and I think um, in the future there's only I mean there's only up from here you know nothing against the other programs that were here but you know they did fall um, you know apart at some point and I think that a lot of it had to do with not having 
um, that institution behind it. And I think that now that we do, um, it's important that we don't lose it, but we only elevate from here. So, so my message uh, to men and all those involved with men is to uh, number one, congratulations on uh, reaching this this point. Uh, I would say continue to reach uh, uh, toward uh, progress and change for not just for yourselves, not just for the people that you know, but to to to, to imagine and reach beyond uh, those that you know. Uh, Think about the the students who will come after you in the next 10, 15, 20 years and to imagine what men could be or, or should be for them when they need it. Um, so I would just say continue continue doing uh, great work and, and remember that uh, you know you you are the change that that we need.